Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, especially good morning, uh, Alexandre de Juniac. Uh, uh, just briefly, uh, my name is Christian Schubert. I'm a journalist. I work for the German uh, newspaper Frankfurter Allgemeine. I'm based here in Paris, and uh, I'm very happy to uh, have the opportunity today to uh, interview um, Alexandre de Juniac. Oh, thank you very much, Atalis, uh, who is the uh, host uh, company. Um, Alexandre de Juniac, you don't need very much of uh, introduction. Just briefly, for those maybe who are not so uh, familiar, uh, you are the president of. Well, I've been there for 15 years in this country. Exactly, that's what I just uh, I wanted to say. <laughs> so, uh, but let's start earlier, because uh, your your education uh, is uh, of course uh, brilliant at uh, at uh, Ecole Polytechnique oh, let's in uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I would like to mention as well um, that you have been uh, the chief advisor for a while uh, of Christine Lagarde when she was finance uh, minister. And as you said, uh, 14 or 15 years of uh, Thales, where I think you were also responsible for air systems. So I suppose this is where the, 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 the love for aviation uh, started? Well, it came before. Came before. Okay, good, well good. <laughs> Uh, maybe you can elaborate a little bit about that. Okay, so after Christine Lagarde, um, you became, as uh, as uh, most people know, the CEO, PDG CEO of Air France for uh, five years. Yes. About, yeah. And since 2016, you are the president of the uh, organization IATA, the International Air Transport Association. Yeah. So uh, can I start with a first uh, quite, quite simple question? I think you're based in Geneva. Right, so, yep. so can I ask you, how did you get here? By which mean of transport? Uh, plane, of course. Plane, okay, of course. <laughs> Nobody would expect I'm not a big lover of else. trains, so that, that, that's my thing. I don't like trains. So you don't like trains, no. yeah, yeah, that's, that's not a surprise, yeah. No. Uh, there are big competitors for us. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Um, but, but let me ask this, this a little bit. Uh, I mean, you're probably the last person to ask this question, but I, I, I mention it anyway. Uh, I suppose you don't feel ashamed uh, taking the uh, airplane. Um, you know, um, there is this um, big, uh, yeah, how should I say, it's a, it's a, it's a campaign, it's, a, it's an increasing awareness. Uh, in Germany, in my home country, I can, I can say as well, people talk about this new word that they call um, uh, flight uh, shame uh, in English. Um, so it's, it, it's going to be an issue that will not go away, I suppose, for a while at least. Uh, so, so how is it possible that uh, uh, the aviation industry, a multi-billion dollar euro industry, kind of got on, on the defensive because of a 16-year-old girl from Sweden? Um, it, it's a good question, and we are partly responsible for that. But I will start first of all to say that the flixcam, uh, which is the Swedish word, my, my, my Swedish is limited to this word. Uh, so uh, flixcam is something... Um, that is, from my point of view, uh, based on wrong information and give a wrong perspective. Wrong, wrong information for what reason? Because we have, the old industry has committed um, 10 years ago, in, in 2009, uh, to, f um, to reduce our carbon footprint. And we, take, we took three commitments with all of us. When I say us, it's Thales, the aircraft manufacturers, the airports, the airlines, of course. The first one was to reduce the um, CO2 emission per passengers by 1.5%, uh, and we are better than that. It's, uh, we are doing 2.3, 2.4 reduction per passenger. That was starting uh, in 2009 and, and supposedly uh, up to 2020. Starting in 2020, we will have a carbon neutral growth which will be done through a worldwide mechanism of compensation. So the airline will buy carbon credits. Pla planting trees as well. Planting trees, <laughs> or, and, uh, and, uh, and um, the third step in 2050, we have committed to reduce our carbon footprint by, by half compared to the 2005 level, even including the growth of uh, air traffic. That's a very ambitious, very, very, very ambitious uh, um, uh, target. Um, so that's the commitment we made. We, so we haven't waited for uh, Madame Greta Thornberg to teach us what to do. Uh, we, we have done the job. And we have done the job for 
at least two reasons. But first of all, because we have people in, in this industry who believe that it is important to save the planet. So, so it's their conviction to save the planet. And secondly, it was our interest, also economic interest, if we want people to continue to fly and to be proud to fly, not to be ashamed. Um, we, we, we had to, to, uh, to tell them, don't worry, you will be able to fly without uh, emitting CO2. Okay, so, so that's a key, the key point is there. And the second strong disagreement I have with Madame Thornberg is that, you know, she is, what is she is, um, she's aiming at um, um, stop flying, uh, uh, stop growing. So she has absolutely no um, belief or no faith in human brain, in human inventiveness, in creativity. Uh, we will demonstrate that with our brain, our intelligence, our creativity, uh, the, the brain of all these guys around, around this room, it's possible to reduce our carbon footprint and fly more. Huh? So, you know, giving to the young generation a complete hopeless no landscape of our future, I completely disagree with that. Totally disagree. But we need these guys now to, uh, to invent the right system, reduce our carbon footprint. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I would like to talk about technologies in, in a moment, but just before, it's like with the car industry, right? The massive growth of number of cars, and in your case, the massive growth of number of airplanes, is a, is a real challenge. Huh? Yes. And, and yes. I understand you have this uh, agreement that you mentioned, uh, 2050, half of the em emissions of the 2005 level, uh, but you have countries, I understand, like China, which don't accept this uh, agreement for the moment. Yeah, the, the Corsair, I think it's called Corsair, right? On the, the Corsair on the I, I c ICAO level. Um, so so fact, not they everybody accept it, but they don't want to join the voluntary phase. Okay. There is a voluntary phase which starts in 2021 and ends in 2026, and there is a mandatory phase which starts in 2027. Yeah. So they will they will comply with the mandatory phase. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But is that is everybody on board and 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 quickly enough? Yeah, yeah everybody is on board. We we represent the the uh, the, uh, the states which will join the voluntary phase. So in 2021, they represent something like 50 percent of the traffic, already. Already. So we are not worried. Huh? Uh, uh, the point now that on which we have to work is to use um, alternative fuels and to invest in new energies, so whether it is electrical or uh, hydrogen, hydrogen, but it's a bit uncertain. The biofuels, it work. We know we have uh, hundreds of thousands, millions of uh, flight hours um, uh, using biofuel, it work. And for us, using bio uh, biofuels could contribute to up to 80% of the reduction of our carbon footprint. So it's a key element. But we need mass production and distribution. And so it's a point on which the government could do something clever instead of taxing everybody, which is totally unclever. I can, I can tell you, I've been in the Ministry of Finance. Uh, uh, inventing taxes, it was my job. So I know how I did it, probably. <laughs> you were good at it. I'm not sure. <laughs> so so the, no, but say it's, it's a point. With taxes, you do not achieve anything. But with in in um, incentives, it works. When you look at how the renewable energies have been developed, take France, for, in for instance, whether you like it or not, the development of windmills and solar panels has been strongly helped by economic incentives, mainly by, uh, by uh, in, uh, reducing uh, the cost or increasing the price um, uh, that of the electricity produced by, the, uh, by, by, these, uh, by these elements. What we could ask governments is to uh, uh, devote some money uh, to improve uh, the mass production of biofuels and the distribution. Th that could be very, very useful. Biofuels, I mean, without now getting but the too biofuels much sorry. into sorry. the details, they also have a downside, right? No, no which it's which biofuels is made of renewable and recyclable uh, uh, origin. So it can be waste treatment, not using agricultural surfaces, all that stuff. So you're not talking about palm oil, uh, for nah. example? And no, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. No, because we know, as you know, we have been working on that for, 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 for uh, more than a decade. So we know everything and all the pros and cons of each uh, system to reduce our carbon emission. 
We have worked on that. So, but we are responsible for, because I told you that we are responsible for this, uh, 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 this awareness or the, the strength of this campaign, anti-aviation. We are responsible because outside of the circles of aviation, nobody is aware of what we are doing. You know, I'm, I'm flying all over the planet without being ashamed, and I meet a lot of people uh, who are not in the aviation circles. And <coughs> what I can tell you is these people, they don't know. They don't know what we are doing. They don't know at all. But the good news is when, we, when they know, when we explain the story, the commitment, etc., they, they are convinced. So we have a good story to tell, but we haven't told it to anyone outside the aviation circle. So what we are going to start a very big campaign these days, uh, grouping the whole industry together, airlines, uh, OEMs, aircraft manufacturers, ANSPs, um, uh, airports, to, uh, to explain what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And will you say clearly in this campaign that you will bring down the overall volume of emissions? Hello. Because oh. that's the challenge, right? You, you grow 4% per 5%, 4 yeah. to 5%, I think, every year. Mm -hmm. yeah? The emissions might go down by 1%, but still you increase the emissions because the, the fleet worldwide will, will double uh, to 40,000, I think, in 20 years. But you will see in the 20 campaign, uh, years. and you will be the judge, we'll see we address promptly the problem. We say that is the question, that is the problem we have to deal with, that is the solution we are proposing. No, say no, it's no. don't worry, it will be... Uh, alors the campaign, for those who want to know, is called Fly Aware. Fly Aware. Okay. Because what we, when we, we made surveys huh, to, 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 to understand what was the public opinion. And the public opinion is the following, we have three, three parts. A first part, which doesn't care, so they will fly whatever, represents 30 to 40 percent. You have 30 to 40 percent, second part, who are wants, they want to fly, but they want to be uh, comfortable. They want to be reinsured, they want to be informed, they want to be comfortable when they take the plane that they contribute or they do not destroy the planet. And you have 20 percent that are, that want to change their behavior and stop flying. Okay. But uh, I don't know if you have thought one second, ju just one second, what type of world these people who want to stop flying, stay in their home, in their little village, behind, behind their small wall, what, what, what do they want us, in what, in what world do they want us to live? W in a world without contact, without knowing each other, without meeting our friends, our, our cultures, without um, doing business anywhere else? I mean, it's completely crazy yeah. what you're talking about. So your campaign will will focus on this aspect like of bringing people of course, together. Of yeah? course. So, mm. It's what we do to, uh, every day. We should be proud of that. And, and in this company, they should be proud to contribute to that. Enfin, that's what I think they are. I hope. But do you agree that, that companies uh, and airlines have to get better in terms of, uh, and, and not just companies, also manufacturers, but I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. But just a, a, a quick a personal experience. Uh, I took a holiday in, in Vietnam, and I was not ashamed, but I wanted to go from an airplane, uh, sorry, from an airline that you know very well. Uh, I know I wanted to, to, to plant trees or have trees planted, mm -hmm. yeah, but the link didn't work yeah, of, of the website. So I had to... So I, no, did I did go to we the website of the of the NGO and I donated some money there. Yeah, but I think there are not so many people uh, who who do that. So I think I mean these these mechanisms, also the the control of actually what the NGOs do on the ground, that has to be uh, largely uh, improved, sure, right? Sure. A and we have to propose to to everyone who wants to contribute any mechanism to uh, reduce the CO two by planting trees or whatever. You must know something. I'm sorry for that, but that's human nature. Huh? Many companies are proposing, you know, compensation mechanisms. Uh, EasyJet is proposing, Lufthansa is proposing uh, this, uh, this mechanism. You must know that the success of this mechanism is very low. So people, you know, so they people say don't that use it, you they think. are very concerned, but yeah. when, when it comes to paying uh, a penny, uh, there's no one. Eh? Um, uh, welcome to human beings. Huh? No, I mean th that's an interesting point. Huh? Even mm. in Sweden, what I say is true. Because SAS is proposing the same the same type of uh, compensation mechanism, but don't you? S I, I, I at least I was reading that uh, 
domestic flights or short distance flights in Sweden would already go down. Have, have you seen that uh, effect? Yeah, uh, the, the demand has, uh, has come down, partly probably because of fleet scam, partly also, and we, no we are not able to measure uh, the, the, the respective proportion. It's so partly because of the re um, slowdown in the GDP growth. So mm. that we, we are unable at this stage to measure what is the respective influence of each factor. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. up, to up to now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the technology will also help. Uh, uh, yeah. you, know, you know that the, the, the aircraft are 20% more fuel efficient now than they were uh, 15 years ago. Uh, the emission per passenger has been reducing by 40% since 1990. 40, 401. So it's, uh, it's big numbers, huh? Do you know, you know what technology that has also been shown here at the Thales Innovation Days, like new flight management systems, uh, improving the, the flight paths, uh, improve improving or reducing the, the time of, uh, of waiting to, to land, actually. Uh, do you know how much that could uh, have an impact? Uh, if you accumulate all possible improvements coming from optimization of operation, so uh, air traffic control, uh, uh, approach in the airport, taxiing uh, on, uh, on the tarmac, uh, optimizing the trajectories, uh, in it, it, it could go up to 10 to 15 percent reduction of, uh, of emission. Mm -hmm. Quite when uh, you accumulate, when you pile up everything. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But we, for that, at least in Europe, we also have to work uh, together better as, as nations. I'm thinking of the European Single Sky, uh, agreement which uh, we don't have, right? So is, is that uh, uh, a barrier also to uh, improve efficiency? Yes, it's a big barrier. Uh, in the last two seasons, uh, summer seasons, we have piled up in uh, 2018 um, something like 19 million minutes delays due to bad management of the sky. And in 2019, it will be uh, something like 17 million minutes of delay only by bad management of the sky. This bad management coming from the disagreement between, betwe between the various a national ANSPs and bad management. LSPs being? NSPs. NSPs. Uh, th that's uh, um, uh, um, Air Traffic Control Authority. Yeah. Um, and particularly, sorry for that, but for the, uh, due to the German with French, uh, uh, the German, because they have badly planned the staffing in Karlsruhe Center, you know, if the Germans are badly planning, uh, where are we going? It's like, uh, yeah, huh? it happens. <laughs> uh, it happens, and the French, because we, we, we are having strikes in Aix-en-Provence, that's more a national sport. Okay, so it's just that's, that's, that's the point. No, but that's an interesting point. Huh? The, the, and and you know, it is critical because these two countries, by the way, are central geographically in Europe. So when it goes wrong, you know, the all European traffic is is uh, disrupted and severely disrupted. Is, is the problem in Karlsruhe ongoing, or is it better now? Uh, it will take three years, because you have to plan the recruitment of new staff. It's impossible to reallocate for social reasons, let's call that in a polite way, uh, 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 staff from one center to another. So, uh, voilà, lovely, lovely situation. Mm. And uh, you know, the, the national NSPs, they do not accept easily the control of the European authorities, basi basically Euro control. Yeah. So um, there is and a long, long way to a long, long way to go to uh, to uh, force everyone to cooperate. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that in Europe, you you have border you uh, you you have you don't have borders on the ground, and you can go from uh, even from Switzerland, which is not in EU, uh, uh, to Germany, to France, etc., without being controlled, and you have borders in the sky. Yes, I understand. When you think about that twice, it's totally crazy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's basically because the sovereignty, uh, the sovereignty reasons. Sovereignty reasons. Sovereignty reasons. It's plus mm. some social issues. When you okay. So it's also the governments who are afraid yeah. of giving up some sort of power, right? Or yes, plus uh, you know have, having some disagreement with their staff in the air, air traffic control center. It might happen. You know, we have. Uh, they at the north uh, in the German and um, and the Swiss border, you have a crossing of two big roads, two two highways, let's say highways of uh, for uh, for planes, huh? which is which is a danger. It's a danger because it's a crossroad between airplanes. 
a few years ago, I think four or five years ago, there was a plan to, to make two parallel roads, to, so to avoid this crossing, which has a replication in Luxembourg, by the way, there. Uh, it was refused due to uh, a negotiation with the French controller that refused it. So even in terms of safety, there is a, there is a key issue there, you know, preventing the airspace to be safer and more efficient. Mm. Also, I understand the, 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 the communication. But it's everywhere the same situation. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have that in China, we have that on the Gulf, we have that in the US. So, not at this point, perhaps, but also in a, uh, it creates difficult situations. Is that also a reason why um, a lot of the air traffic management is not yet digital, right? There is still a lot of radio communication, which probably makes sense, but, but I... Not. It's only by radio. Yeah. It's only by VHF which is a nice technology invented at the end of the 19th century, probably, or perhaps like in 50s, uh, 40s. Everything, by, by so, so you have all the specialists in this, uh, in this room, but everything could be automatized, probably, with uh, human supervision. Yeah. Uh, I wish you good luck. Huh? <laughs> the negotiation, you have to start <laughs> now to implement that in 2050, 2060. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> long, long delay. Sounds like the Berlin airport. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, so um, in terms of airplanes, because no, but infrastructure is a big, is a big issue, huh? yeah. not only yeah. in Europe. Huh? Building the right, it's everywhere a complication to build an aircraft, everywhere, due to the environment and mainly noise. There is not CO2, it's noise. In terms of um, airplanes, because um, you represent also the Boeing and Airbus and the manufacturers, right? Um, there I has I been I a long I am time. only their customer. But aren't they also IATA members? No. Oh, I thought, no. okay. They are partners. But partners, but okay. Sorry, okay. But anyway, I'm sure you have a, have a message for them as well. Um, because for a long time, um, they were talking about um, developing a really new airplane in their bread and butter category, which is in Airbus the A320 and the, uh, for Boeing the Boeing, uh, Boeing uh, C737. Um, so a really new airplane yeah, with a really new uh, engine. Uh, what they did so far was, you know, smaller improvements and then they call it NEO, A320 NEO, or they call it uh, 737 MAX, you know, but it's not a real airplane because it would, uh, it would mean to invest like 10 billion, at least 12 billion euros. And they, they were not doing it because the older models sort of, or the existing models, they still sell well. Huh? So is that a, a problem? And are the, because you could make a, re a real leap, right, with a, with a completely new airplane in terms of uh, savings and efficiency, not just single digit, you could make really big savings probably, but they're not doing it because yeah, your airlines, they ask for the existing model. So, so everybody is sort of afraid to, to invest heavily. Uh, no, n not really. No, we ask for what exists, first of all. Huh? We have to. Secondly, in terms of R&D investment, uh, the airlines are not in the capacity to, in to invest in R&D. You must know that because we are a poor industry. We, we make no margins, is a small problem. Huh? So, so uh, no margins, no investment, no, no, no R&D. So, 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 so it doesn't exist. So we buy the R&D when we buy an aircraft, but we do not invest in preparing you know, the, the, the future of aircraft. Secondly, uh, we ask for general, general improvement, more efficiency, fuel, fuel consumption, uh, uh, easy maintenance, easy or less costly, because maintenance is an enormous uh, cost, uh, uh, cost area for us. Uh, and um, when you run an airline, you know, you want a wide, uh, the, the, the wider possible body uh, for, the, for the type of aircraft to be able to, 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 to densify the most the cabin. That is the key issue. You put to a lot of people in the, in the because you have to fill the uh, aircraft with, with people paying for a ticket. So 
this basic, huh? sorry. Uh, and, and, then and then you ask for special systems to entertain them, etc. But the, the, the cost per passenger for us is absolutely key. And the cost depends on the density and uh, on the cost for maintenance and the cost of fuel, I would say. And the rest, we leave that to the aircraft manufacturers, whether they use uh, carbon fiber, uh, uh, advanced avionics, or all that stuff, it is their business. Couldn't it be? Couldn't but it be we are not, you know, it's difficult for us. We don't have the teams or the skills to uh, help to define technically what will be the aircraft. We can participate, we can give some input, but we don't have the technical skills to explain precisely what or what type of engines uh, we need, which is an important point for fuel consumption. Okay, but if, if you are if you are many and you ask for a, a particular airplane, they probably produce it for you. It's a question of, 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 of demand. Huh? If, if you are many who, who are interested in that. Huh? If you would all say, we the want to become area, really green airline, yeah. Airbus and Boeing would probably produce these airplanes yeah, for you. But right? it's, it's, it must be scientifically or technically proven. You know, we, uh, you read a lot of things about the future electrical aircraft. If there is an electrical aircraft in 15 years transporting 40 passengers, uh, so it will be a miracle. Because, sorry, yeah. but the batteries are heavy and, and, uh, and they have, and they are, uh, and they, uh, and they occupy a big, a big volume. Mm. That's, I'm sorry, that's physics. Huh? So it's and to, to this knowledge, up to this knowledge, we don't know how to, uh, to, uh, to make lighter and less volumic batteries. I think Guillaume Fauri, you know, the Airbus CEO, yeah. just said yesterday evening in Hamburg in front of a German aviation journalist that he wants to have in 2035 a hybrid airplane yeah. flying. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you, s you think it's possible? Or no, no, but I, no but hybrid will, will work, but it will work for small aircraft. And when you think about hybrid, uh, just think that you have to make a conversion of energy. So in terms of using optimization of uh, the use of energy, um, not particularly efficient in terms of energy saving yeah. as a whole. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a detail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably. Important detail. But uh, uh, let's talk, when you say, you know, you don't have margins, uh, and the, but uh, somebody needs margins to invest, right? Uh, uh, in the, in the value so chain. So Airbus and Boeing, they no, will, will have them the Boeing a little chain, bit less. We are the, the only one not to have margins. Huh? Sorry? In the value chain of the aviation industry, we are the only one not to have margins. The airlines. The aircraft manufacturers, they have margins. The OEMs, they have margins. The travel agency, they have margins. The GDS have margins. And us, uh, so because we are squeezed yeah. uh, between uh, very strong competition and suppliers that are usually in a strong position. I mean, um, just a brief remark. Uh, let's take the A380, which was a, a, a misinvestment, right? Uh, I mean, commercially, technically, great airplane, and passengers love it, but there's no, not enough demand from, from the airlines. It was an airplane, but passengers love it, but nobody has been able to pay one dollar more to fly an A380 than a, tri than a 777. Huh? Nobody has been able to sell a ticket more uh, at a higher price for an A380 than to any, one, to, to any other aircraft. Yeah, wh why should I pay a higher price for the A380? So it means that your preference is low. Well, oh. so you, you, but you need to s offer an extra service so that I'm yeah. willing to pay. No, but it means that your preference for this aircraft is low. Whether you like it or not, I'm sorry, but it, it, is, uh, it reveals your hierarchy of preference and uh, in terms of preferences, the preferences of passenger for the A380 was not so high that they were ready to pay for that. That's an interesting point, huh? But there, I mean, everybody sort of misjudged uh, the demand, right? The airlines, the, the manufacturers, and it's, it's, a, it's a pity, isn't it? Uh, if they would have invested all that money into into real green technology, we would be further in in, in this field. Not sure because uh, in the 380 there were there were new technologies that were that were created. I speak under the control of this room, but if I remember, the integrated uh, avionics was built for the A380 as far as I remember. Is that right or is that right? 
enfin, je crois. Uh, uh, the, so, so, so the integrated avionics, uh, in terms of materials, uh, some materials have been also done for the F-280 so that are used for uh, green aircraft, so it's a more efficient aircraft. So um, the money has not been wasted. I don't think so. I don't think so. Are we flying too cheap? I saw the other day, you know, another airplane, another airline that you know, uh, Paris, Los Angeles, uh, 329 euros. I mean, how can you, how can you make money, uh, and at l and and not even talking about investing something? You know, how can you make money with such prices? It's a big argument that is developed by the NGOs. Uh, they say you are contributing to the uh, CO2 because uh, you are you are you are uh, offering tickets too cheap, so too many people can uh, can fly, which is an interesting political and social argument when you think about that. No? So uh, you know, giving access to anyone to fly is now something that is uh, bad. Uh, I I was asked this the similar question uh, in the Swedish Parliament by a Swedish MP who stood up and who told me, Monsieur Gignac, you are flying four billion passengers, it's too much, it's a good news, you're free. No? Um, I said, perhaps, but you will, you will learn Chinese quickly and you will explain to the one billion, 1.6 billion Chinese people who want to fly that they are not allowed to. Uh, no, it's not for them. And uh, I wish you good luck. Huh? Because you know, even in the situation in which we see a slowdown in traffic, in air traffic, and the traffic has been divided by two, no? in 2019 compared to 2018. So it means that the GDP is, uh, is, is slowing down. In China, the domestic demand is plus 10, plus 11 percent. India as well. So, so people want to fly, and yeah. they want a general mm -hmm. access. Mm -hmm. And the success of the low cost demonstrates that it, uh, it corresponds to a strong demand. And it will continue. Believe me, it will continue. Frankly, I, I live in Geneva. Uh, uh, without, G without EasyJet, Geneva wouldn't be connected with the rest of the world. Uh, EasyJet represents 49% of the traffic of the airport. Uh. And despite the fact that I find it interesting, uh, I mean, at some point, uh, one of the low-cost airline uh, uh, top managers, I think he called passengers uh, self-loading cargo, uh, <laughs> which I found was an interesting expression. To the head of high yeah. Sorry? Yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, but despite of that, uh, the demand is there and will be there. That's what, what, what you're saying, right? Oh, the, demand, the, uh, the demand is there. People want to fly because, surprisingly, they want uh, to have the freedom, the freedom to go where they want. And that's very surprising when you know a human being. It's, a, you know, it's a basic freedom. Don't forget that. Huh? Sure, definitely. But, but it... When you put someone in jail, mm. the basic freedom you, you stop is, is freedom to go where he wants. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, the, 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 before the big question... Before voting. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but you think of what it means philosophically. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the big question is, and this is where, where taxation comes in as well, or, or CO2 pricing, you know, are all the externalities that mm -hmm. flying creates, mm -hmm. you know, also pollution, uh, represented in the price, and I think, and they are definitely not right. When you fly, fly uh, 300 euros to Los Angeles, all the externalities, all the bad things that you create or that that you do, they are not reflected in the price. So this is where taxation probably comes in. Maybe taxation taxation should make sure that this external external that these external costs are in the price in the future. As you know, as I told you, I am not uh, in favor of taxation because uh, f f f for two reasons. First of all, we haven't seen a, a taxation influencing significantly the behavior in terms of environment. It doesn't work. I'm sorry, but it doesn't work. Incentives work. No taxation. No taxation. That's the first one. Or regulation. Ah, regulation is another story. Yeah. Regulation yeah. works. Mm -hmm. huh? And secondly, I know how taxations are made. You know, you create a tax for a so-called environment purpose, and you devote, uh, the, uh, and the money is totally taken away to finance everything but environment. I've done that in the past, actually. So, 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 so you know, uh, this money, mm. if, it, if it was um, logical and useful, we should use the money of taxation to finance green technology for aviation. Th that could be useful. 
but it, it will not happen. It has never happened. Just never. The question we'll is a bit. For the pension I mean, of the false guys, mm -hmm. which is nice, but mm -hmm. yeah. the, the question is a bit. Do you accept ex, uh, a taxation which is sort of level with the other means of, on the same level as the other means of transportation? As you know, uh, aviation fuel is not taxed. Um, international uh, airline tickets are not uh, VAT taxed. So bien sûr que si. Oh, si. Of, of course, it is VAT tax. Okay. Ah non, Then ah I'm non. Uh, so, so you, uh, you have no tax on kerosene. That's true, yeah. but um, but uh, but you have uh, you have tax on uh, on uh, on tickets. Or it depends on the country. Huh? Depends. Okay. In yeah. In some countries, countries not. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No. So um, uh, but and and I if I may, mm -hmm. um, you say that we don't pay for our externalities. I am I I partly disagree with that. We are the only transportation that pays for for all its infrastructure. Surprised the airport. By, by airport, airport fees airport, and so airport on. Airport, yeah. overflight fees, air traffic control, we pay for everything. And uh, don't forget that, huh? Uh, when you use your car, uh, you, 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 uh, you don't pay for the road, usually, except the highways, mm. or the toll, the toll highways. But the railway also pay the fees for the, uh, very new. For the railway. It's very new. Mm. And they don't pay the total, uh, the total amount of the cost. Because you mentioned regulation, I mean, think about the car industry. You know, if there would have not been regulation uh, for the uh, catalytic converter at some point, you know, you need a catalytic mm -hmm. converter in uh, year X. You know, we would have not have had these improvements. So, But regulation, do I we need this yeah? kind of uh, regulation yeah. for uh, the aviation industry? Yes, and we have the Corsia program that we were mentioning just before is a regulatory program. It has been adopted by ICAO. It will be mandatory in 2027. And it's a program that will impose to um, airlines to compensate the CO2 emission by buying, uh, by buying carbon credit uh, uh, program. So it's a regulation, and it will work, and we are uh, in favor of that. We are advocating, advocating in favor of that, strongly. Uh, and But and the point, uh, there is a small point there. When this program was adopted by the ICAO Assembly in 2016, all the countries, particularly the European countries, committed to 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 say to the others it will be the only the only program uh, uh, mandatory to compensate co2 emissions and immediately what they did was uh, was to invent taxes everywhere in addition to uh, this Corsia program and in addition to the EU ETS system that is already existing um, so they have totally uh, 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 act uh, in opposition to what they committed to When you think about that, uh, and it has weakened the strength of this program, because all the other countries said, "Hey, hey, you, hey uh, you, uh, the Europeans, you are teaching us everything. You are, this, uh, you are, you are, you are paving the way, apparently, uh, but uh, you, you, you do not behave as you committed to." It has been a big disaster. Huh? And in ICAO or uh, ICAO or uh, Corsair, Corsair uh, countries who do not participate, can they be sanctioned? No, they cannot be sanctioned. So that's a problem. It's, uh, I don't think it will be a big problem. I will tell you why. Because they will join. Nobody has said that they will not join. Only the voluntary phase, in starting in 2021. But the mandatory phase, everybody has agreed to do it. China, or even Russia. But they have some argument that should be considered. But, but okay. no, not to participate in the voluntary phase. Yeah, but do you think pressure from sort of naming and shaming eventually will will make them yeah, it's very strong. Uh, enter? It is very strong, and you must know that uh, from from 2020 to 2020, 2030, 2031, the money that will be generated by Corsia is 40 billion US dollars to fund uh, to fund uh, um, uh, carbon credit or uh, CO2 emission reduction program. 40 billion US. It's not a small amount of money. 40 billion for zero. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the moment, Alexandre de Juniac. I think this is the time where I could uh, open the floor to some questions. Uh, if there are some questions uh, in the audience, yeah, or if you might think about some questions, and uh, uh, in the in the meantime, maybe I could we could go on and uh, and uh, um, talk further about uh, our our issues. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. So he's I'm just uh, yeah, looking. Okay, there's the gentleman there. Please. Thank you. Um, <coughs> you described your fly aware project, and you also described the segmentation of your customers in terms of those who are aware, those who care, and those who don't. Following the FlyAware program, do you expect there to be a different mix in your customer base in terms of those who actually care and possibly those who will actually pay a premium once they understand what you've actually done? Uh, yes, we hope. We hope that uh, if this program is successful, we will change you know, the uh, appreciation and the relation that uh, the passengers have with, uh, with, uh, with flying. We hope it will work, huh? and w for you will see we'll use every every possible means. We use the social networks, uh, flyers in the plane, the IFE system that you are manufacturing. We will ask you probably to to put some content in your in your IFE systems, um, uh, and we will use of course uh, 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 Air Force or uh, and even a little of TV. The TV is possible too for us. So, and, and just following on from that. Um, do you anticipate that actually creating or accelerating the move to a greener world once these FlyAware type of programs have gone out there, do you, do you, do you see it as uh, more pressure being created on the world to move into that greener type of environment? Uh, uh, we hope so because we think that we shouldn't be ashamed of what we are, uh, we are doing, we should be proud. So it could be a kind of, if it works, an example for the other industries. And frankly, in terms of example, this industry aviation has been, has been a, a, a leading example because we are the only uh, industry to have taken commitment so early and to have convinced the international regulator, namely the ICAO, you know, to adopt a worldwide program which is mandatory for the whole industry. We, so in, in other words, we have asked government, can we be regulated please? And I don't know many other industries who have done the same. Thank you. Are you saying uh, how much, what's the budget for your awareness campaign? Can you say that? Uh, no. No, uh, because it's a bit meaningless, I will tell you. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, several millions of dollars for IATA, but we are, we are also counting on the others, on the aircraft manufacturers, on, the, on our members' airlines. You know, they will also spend money. So it will at the end, it will could be very high. Uh, could be very high. Yeah. But you, you do nothing for nothing, eh? Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, okay, I don't see a further question for the for the moment. There's a quarter. Please. Yes, uh, Boeing is going through a, a, a major crisis with the 737 MAX. Uh, what is your assessment on the potential impacts for the, the worldwide air traffic in terms of recovery and potential uh, loss of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, faith in the, in the, the safety of the, the air transport itself. Yeah, but that's the second point, which is the most, uh, the most critical. Huh? Uh, because as you know, uh, before the certification system was a, a, a unique authority of certification with mutual recognition. So for Boeing, it was the FA, which was uh, certifying and, uh, and, and the rest of the authorities were following Boeing. And it was uh, the, uh, the, oppo the, uh, the opposite for Airbus and EASA, etc. Um, and this system has been working very well. Frankly, in terms of safety, this industry can be proud of what, what, what it has done. We, we are very, very good in terms of, we are the safest uh, transportation mean by far. Uh, so it has worked. And the, the, the 737 MAX has broken completely this, uh, this uh, unique, this uh, um, uh, homogeneous system. <laughs> Now we will have we, we are heading towards something in which we will have perhaps different certification processes or different certification authorities all around the world. Already for the range fin system, it was a 737 max. Despite the fact that we have lobbied, advocate in favor of maintaining you know the unicity of the certification and mutual recognition, EASA will have a slightly different certification uh, uh, process, and apparently Abu Dhabi as well. And I'm sure that the Chinese will do also differently. So for us, that's a cat that's a, it is a catastrophe. Because it will be costly, more complex, probably less safe. So 
Uh, what should have been done, I will tell you what should have been done. First of all, this crisis not very, has not been very well managed, frankly, uh, um, both by FA and Boeing. But what they should have done, I, I, I told that to the FAA several times, uh, put everything on the table, everything, tr be totally transparent with Boeing. In our world, you cannot hide anything. Uh, or mm -hmm. They have done this or not? Uh, you know, uh, every week we, uh, you discover a new, uh, new uh, system that uh, was not totally, partially controlled, blah, blah, blah. Well, really, they, they have not done it properly. Second point, in terms of certification processes, what I would advise modestly uh, to, the, to the certification authorities is if there is a problem in the certification process, please, guys, open book and peer review with all of us or all of the authorities around the table to review the processes but this will all together. This will not be done. Uh, well, not for the moment. But it's what I would do, huh? perhaps, uh, you know, to, to because we have to uh, reinstall the confidence of the public in the, in the aviation industry. And, uh, and, and you know already that United, to, to, to give that example, has said that passengers could choose to fly or not to fly in the 737 MAX. Ah, I wish them good luck. Huh? If if when you enter to Annapolis, you know, well, not not this aircraft, huh? another one. Hmm. In terms of planning. So you're saying the new certification system worldwide that we will have, uh, as a consequence of the will will make things that's a a less safe. But you, you know, I do not believe that having a safe process done by a competent and skilled authority is better than to have different processes done by fr fragmented authorities. It's improper. And particularly because the previous system, which was unique, huh, has demonstrated its ability. But, but it failed in the US. It failed for the 737 MAX. Uh, it, it is both a failure of the certification and frankly, uh, I think, a bit of the system, uh, of, the, of the unique system. Uh, the MCS could have been improved. And for us, the airline, uh, uh, we should have better documentation and better training. Because if you read uh, the report of the Ethiopian accident, the guy has fought against the aircraft. It has been a battle between the aircraft and the pilot, and you believe it. And you know, he, uh, um, when he was you know, fighting against the aircraft, he was flipping you know, the, the documentation to see what he had to do. Uh, normal. It's a complete, when you think of that, it's a disaster. In terms of operations, it's a disaster. And, you know, on a, on a more general level, was this a consequence of the, the conflict between, on the one hand, you know, creating profits, chasing profits for the shareholders, and, and on the other hand, making things properly in the company, giving time and verifying no and so it's on? It's an old story, like, you know, to oppose, you know, profit and so on. You can do both, and this industry has demonstrated that it's able to do both, provided the processes and the authorities do their job. And, and, and the industry does, their, uh, does the job. Frankly, I, 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 I wouldn't accuse uh, the profitability or the, the, the research for profit in Boeing uh, to have mismanaged or misdesigned uh, the MCAS software. Uh, I don't believe that. Do you think uh, also because of this uh, accident, these accidents? What I believe is that uh, when you talk about flight control, the certification has to be uh, top. Yeah. Flight control, uh, <laughs> you, you jump into sensitive system. Yeah. You know, we are, for, uh, I, I will give you another example, see from another angle. We are advocating to ITO to have a simplified certification process for some cabin equipment that are not, uh, um, that don't have a, a big impact on safety. Do you know that when we change from one aircraft to another type of aircraft, you know, a, a milk pot or an oven, you have to recertify. It's stupid. It is stupid because it's useless and it devotes some resources to do things that are totally without any interest. In spite of, you know, uh, uh, focusing on what has to be really certified, controlled and checked. My point of view. Do you think that uh, digi more digitalization in the airplane will be accepted by uh, either 
customers, the passengers and the airlines. I'm thinking of a flight management system, and uh, one was presented here, huh, that could at some point lead to one pilot instead of two pilots. Do you think people accept that? The, the, there are two issues there, huh? because I've, I've, uh, I've read the, the what they have done in the FMS, like in Thales, like the FMS that could, uh, could uh, be more automatic mm -hmm. or with one pilot but f and, and permanently connected. The key issue for us, uh, it's still from an airline, it's two things, huh? is first of all, cyber security, if it's permanently connected, huh, the access to the cockpit is open, which is not totally the case yet. For the moment, the access to the cockpit can be done not through the regular, the normal systems, but through the soft, the patch of soft that you put during the maintenance pro in, uh, process in your avionic systems that has been identified then. So you're saying the cockpit can be hacked? The ca cockpit can be hacked only through that, which is very limited. Which is very limited. The patch of software that has to be put in the not following the right process in the in the in the avionic system for example if you have a permanently connected fms uh, you must know that for us it will be a problem it will be a, a big question how the uh, avionics people guarantee that it is totally safe to have this permanent connection well so th that cyber security but this company is a special specialist in security so that i'm sure they will have the uh, the right uh, the right equipment and software, but that's the uh, first issue. Second issue is to uh, is not to convince the pilot. It will be complicated to convince the pilot to go from two to one, huh? especially the union. But it will be to convince the passenger. Mm -hmm. They might ask, you know, what happens if the pilot has a heart attack? Uh, which happened two days ago, by the way. In a, in a, uh, uh, an aircraft had to land because one of the pilots had a heart attack. It's called a Russian aircraft. And uh, I wish you good luck to convince the passenger because <laughs> you know, it, I, 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 it okay. might work, huh? but it will take time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so I don't um, see any further questions. I don't know how we're doing in terms of time. Um, I'm told one hour is okay. I think we are, we are at uh, one hour now. So uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this very interesting talk. <laughs> Thank you.